Today, I want to talk about debt manipulation and how companies fiddle the numbers for their reported balance sheet date, and what you as an investor might want to look at to try and avoid some of the worst corporate blow-ups. But before we go on, I must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulations, we're not allowed to make recommendations and none of what follows should be considered to be investment advice. However, if you do want to avoid those problems, you might want to bear some of the following in mind. The first thing to bear in mind is that the reported balance sheet only has to be valid for that moment on that day. It doesn't have to reflect the normal or typical balance sheet. Now this leaves plenty of room for a creative accountant to move the numbers around, meet the requirements of the credit agencies and make investors think that all is well. Fortunately, this manipulation of the balance sheet does actually leave some telltale signs. The most obvious one is excessive debt raising and repayment. Now this happens because most companies try and match up their assets to their liabilities. So imagine you're buying a building, you borrow long term, you're trying to pre-fund a bit of inventory prior to Christmas, you use an overdraft. The problem a debt manipulator has is in order to construct the balance sheet that they require just before reporting dates, they are constantly raising and repaying their debt, which makes their debt churn much, much higher than it would naturally be. The second thing we look for is unnaturally low receivables. Most industries have standard trade terms, so it's quite easy to spot when an individual company has much lower receivables than you'd expect. The easiest way a company can cut its receivables is to incentivize its customers to pay early. Now this is quite good because although it cuts gross margins, it doesn't appear as a finance cost. Alternatively, you can go along to the bank and factor your invoices. This has two great benefits. First, disclosure requirements are limited. And second, the embedded interest charge can actually be booked as a fee. Thereby, you reduce your debt and you lift your interest cover. The next thing we look at is inventory levels. Again, there are industry norms, so anybody who's got a much lower level of inventory than you expect should be checked. Now, cutting inventory is a little bit more tricky than cutting receivables. Yes, you can get your customers to overorder and possibly offer them discounts and rebates, but you've still got to get them to pay. Perhaps the best way to cut inventory is to use repo financing. What this is, is a situation where you get a counterparty like a bank or a subcontractor to buy your inventory off you over the reporting date, thereby generating cash, under an agreement that you will buy it back two days later. This again is very useful because the disclosure requirements are very limited. The final thing to look at, both working capital and on a long-term basis, is extending your liabilities. Now, not paying your bills is really simple, but tends to annoy your suppliers and lead to disruption if you carry on doing it over time. One solution to this is to use what people are terming reverse factoring. This is where you take along the invoices that you need to pay, go to the bank and get them to pay for it instead using a facility. Now this is great because the suppliers get paid, but if the facility gets removed, tends to blow up the company. These are just some of the most popular methods used by companies to distort the reported net debt figure. The problem is, this hides from investors what's really going on and often leads to misvaluation. This is why at Bucephalus, we use a Bucephalus fully aggregated enterprise value rather than what we consider to be a somewhat naive net debt and enterprise value. Now, these are a few of our findings. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, to keep up to date with our research, click on the links. Thank you very much for your time.